tell me a fond memory about your childhood. Okay, yun ka agad. <laughs> um, I think it was, for me, now looking back, I think the fondest memory I had growing up, like childhood-wise, was just a normal villager type of childhood like you were able to you know still shower under the rain like stuff <laughs> like that like that that's my fondest memory as a child you know like are able to go to the ver- to go to the river and just swim there after school and where, where was your province Iloilo oh, okay where in Iloilo I grew up between the border of Antique and then Iloilo so very like mountains yeah mm-hmm. Is that far from Boracay? I'd say around four hours, yeah. Okay. Growing up, you, you were born in Iloilo. Mm-hmm. And then, when did you move to, uh, is it Australia? Yeah. I think the, the best way to kind of give a timeline on how I yeah. arrived in Australia mm-hmm. is, I grew up in Iloilo, and then up until I was um, 13, mm-hmm. I dropped out of school. So, uh, in the Philippines, I only really finished second year high school. Okay. And then after that, I went to a dark phase where, you know, I got involved in, in drugs and in gangs and doing all of these right. rebellious stuff growing up. And then 13, um, my dad passed away. Uh, he was <laughs> by his own brother. And then oh, that's man. when kind of everything went south. And then when I was 15, my mom sold me for money. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So that was the... That's crazy. How many siblings do you have? I have seven. Seven. And you were the... Second eldest. Second eldest. Yeah. Do you still get in touch with your siblings? Yeah, I'm very close. All like, of them? I embrace all of them. All of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. How did you get from here to Australia then? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So prior to that, when my mom sold me, I got married at age 15. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That got married but not fell in love at 15, no, right? No, no, that was not love. No, no, no. no. It's just I was forced get- into a, a marriage. Um, I was sold for 60,000 peso. Um, Damn. And I got what married year was in this? The, uh, 15. 15 years old. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> 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 I can't even remember. <laughs> but um, I was even married at a Hall of Justice. The thing was, like, everyone That's knew what crazy. was going on, right? They knew that I had a fake birth certificate and all that stuff. But nobody took action. Nobody interfered. Like, this is right. wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then when I was 15, the night after I got married, mm-hmm. um, I was f***ed. And then I escaped the same night. So I ran from the village where I grew up, mm-hmm. four hours from there, to get to the port. And then at that time, there was super ferry. Okay. So <laughs> so that this was in Iloilo? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I ran four hours. It was like middle of the night. I got to the dock. My grandfather's friend helped me, gave me 3,000 peso. Okay. That 3,000 peso, because at, at that time, the, the ferry ticket was like 1,000 pesos. Right. Okay. Jump on the boat, and there was like a middle of a typhoon. Like my life was like in a movie at that time because I thought I was going to die on the way to Manila. Crazy. So I arrive in Manila. I know no one. You know, I was 15. I, I don't know any family here or anything like that. And then I live in Quezon City Circle for two years. I was literally living in Quezon City Circle for two years. In the streets? Yeah, in the streets. So, okay. And then... No roof? No, nothing. I was, I was literally living there, doing rugby and all of that stuff. But how did you live? If Begging? Stealing? Begging. Stealing. Yeah. So what was your first recollection of you stealing something? Because I remember mine. <laughs> Ooh, I was fearless. I think that came from a place where it was I was stealing for survival. Yeah. So it's different. I wasn't yeah. stealing because, you know, I love stealing stuff. Right. No, I don't. It was like for me, like if I don't steal, I'll go hungry. My siblings gonna get go hungry, right. like go hungry as well. So it was coming from a place of survival. So that's that's the best way for me to explain what I felt at that time. I was I wasn't scared. I could not imagine because I was stealing yeah. for fun yeah. as a kid. We all went through that. That was yeah. me. Anything I could find, yeah. you know, um, as a teenager. Mm. But this one is for fun. But yours is like to survive so that you mm-hmm. can eat. Because mm-hmm. your next meal is not guaranteed, right? We had no one to guarantee it. Like mm. I had seven siblings and I basically raised them all on my own. Okay. And, and what changed? What changed? What changed so, from there? Yeah. So when I was in Quezon City, like that, I saved up a little bit of money. And then I went to Recto. <laughs> So I fake birth certificate and a fake uh, college degree, you know, a finished bachelor's in uh, mass <laughs> communication or something. And then I applied for work at Evergotesco in Commonwealth. Okay. As a sales lady. As a sales so was, lady. Yeah, so I was 16 at that time. And, um, and you pretended you were 18? Yeah. 
Okay. So at back in the day, like you can only work six months, six months, diba? right? So it's a yeah, contractual yeah. Contractual, job. and yeah. then they renew it. So um, after that, I, I saved up enough money, money to try and find my dad's side family. Because right. there's eight of us, but mom basically had four different baby daddies. Because remember, my dad died when I was 13, so okay. I lost contact with my father's side family. Right. And I found them in Lipa. In Lipa. In Lipa. Okay, that so, explains why. Yeah. You're based there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So right. I moved there. Life kind of became better because my that, that side of the family is really like they're good people, like amazing. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I met my uh, ex husband mm -hmm. on, because at that time, Uso Payana, Filipina dating. Eh. Okay. So I, I met my ex husband. All right, th this online. was love. Yes. Th okay. This one is love. Okay. All right. Maybe puppy love because I was still yeah, like yeah. 17. Of course. You know? Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah. So that's, that's how a year after that, I went to and moved to. Australia and mm. yeah, that's that's how I basically got is he there. foreigner yeah he's Australian okay. Australian yeah. all right and then how long did you live in Australia uh, far out man like nearly 10 years like that's why that explains the the accent because right when I first moved there I can't even speak English yeah so for people on the podcast asking why <laughs> does she have like <laughs> the, uh, the accent, like an Australian yeah. accent it's because of that like my <laughs> business partner Ira who's lived in Australia for like three years ready when i talked to him it's like who's this guy yeah <laughs> like who the hell are you i don't know you so yeah. uh, you adapt the, the accent pretty fast huh i did because for my me my cousins are there and the, like for a year and then yeah. when i talk to them they're based in batangas yeah when i talk to them over the phone it's like who's this guy different. yeah <laughs> different because i think also it really depends on who you surround yourself with mm -hmm. like there i don't know anyone right so most of my no friends filipinos like Aussies, no filipinos Aussies, so yeah the whole time i was there i was just speaking english and and, and learning because I, I couldn't really get a job there so my first job there was scrubbing toilets in uh Macis, in mcdonald's like janitor you know i was working three jobs sending money back home sending this kid to college buying survival. this house for this kid you survival know? shit yeah yeah i went to different jobs also when i was living in in the state san francisco yeah. i mean, it went from demolition team to being a computer repair guy to like being a caregiver yeah i don't know god knows uh, patient care technician dialysis i didn't even know how to handle a syringe back then it's crazy, but man. yeah the, the things we do you know trying yeah. to survive yeah but what do you think is the best advice you've ever received from someone hmm. you need to i think for me uh, this was i was in thailand at that time uh this was coming from one of my you lived mentors. in thailand no 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 okay. no because uh, when I was when I was working in um, in Australia, I was doing three jobs, and then I was studying business. We used to take this uh, yearly trip in in Thailand as mm -hmm. a group of entrepreneurs. We were I remember when we were we were at the beach. I'm tr I was trying to figure out my purpose, like right. why everything happened, you mm -hmm. know. And he said something so profound that literally changed my life forever. He said that Hirsch, you're not supposed to fight for love. So you're supposed to die for love. It's like because I was fighting to to be recognized, to be to be loved by my mom, by everyone. Right. Right. around me you know and and that's something that that i didn't had growing up and like as a kid you're constantly wanting and needing mm -hmm. that and then when i realized that everything shifted right it's like I, every from there i worked so hard to give my siblings the life that they they, they deserve right. what's your best daily habit that you have priming i'm really big on priming because i think that how you start your day determines how you end your day so i always like the first thing in the morning when i wake up i read 20 pages of mm -hmm. a book and then I, I listen to while I get ready, while I take a shower, I'll, re, I'll, I'll listen to uh, speeches and mm -hmm. books. And what's the most recent book you've read? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Club? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what's your biggest takeaway from that one? Basically that. Like basically how you, you start your day determines how it ends, you know? Right. Because for me, it's such a good feeling to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And most people walk around every day. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Right. They wake up and... They just wiggle it, yeah, right? Just wing it, you know? Just wing it, right? Yeah. I don't have that. Go with so, the flow? No, nah, I don't. <laughs> I, for me, everything is, in a way, everything is planned, but... You know, you, you always leave a room to, to try and be creative and make mistakes and all that stuff. But right. for me, on a daily basis, I know exactly why I'm here. Right. You know? And this is why you have your business now with RVMP and then you have Prod House. What's the difference between those two? So, basically, I've fully transitioned into the Prod House now. Okay. Um... So we're, we're a boutique apparel manufacturing right. company here in the Philippines. For me, I, lo I love the creative side of building a brand. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think this also comes with age, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did all of that in the past 10 years of my, 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 my career in the industry. Right. 
and now I get the the high or I get the the joy in seeing people like me that's starting from nothing and then like wow finally you know like I'm launching my own brand like if I could impact each of these entrepreneurs, each of these founders in a way that I could help them launch their brand mm -hmm. and they, they can could, they can create more jobs with their own companies, right. I'm, I'm all for that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm more into impact nowadays rather than profit. Sure, it's, it's, we all need that to operate, right? But right. what puts me to sleep at night and what uh, wakes me up in the morning is knowing that I'm, I'm doing something of service, not just for, you know, for myself, but for, my, for people that I work with. Right. And the experience you have with, you know, the growing pains and the mistakes and the failures you have with, with your clothing brand yeah. is what you, you know, used yeah. for Prod House, right? Yes, right. absolutely. Because it's like, for me, <laughs> I, I'm coming from a different angle. I'm not yeah. just talking to you and telling you about the technicalities of, of you know, what, what fits good or what, you right. know. I'm, I also have a lot of value to add in terms of speaking their language and understanding right. their pain points and all that stuff. So that's, for me, I, I, I enjoy that. You didn't have any idea when you started your clothing brand, did you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, no, nothing at all. I, I know nothing about yeah. a spec sheet, nothing. You were about. learning everything on the fly too. Yeah. Same experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I, I think that in general, um, most of the time, we don't really know what we're doing, but uh -huh. then the education comes after the decision. It normally shows up when we make the decision. Right. So the, for people like me that didn't have a formal education of, you know, most people have, the only education I had was to just get it done and then learn as you go, you know? Right. Education is not a determination of your success. No. Right. But it helps. It helps, uh, yeah. Make no mistake. Some people say, oh, I'm a college dropout and stuff, but here I am successful. But if you check out the success rate of how many people who didn't finish school, mm. you see that it's very small. Yeah. Like if you made a list of people who are successful as college dropouts, it's slim. But there are success. I'm not saying it's impossible, yeah. but you know, giving yourself proper education and giving yourself a chance, at least there, you have a fighting chance. So. Contrary to public belief, like, oh, um, you could be out of school, but, you know, you could be successful too. Yes, you can. I'm mm -hmm. not saying you, you won't, but you have a bigger chance if you finish your school. And, you know. But the diploma, it's not a determination. It's a visa, man. Like, it doesn't right. guarantee you a, that, you know, you're going to be successful in right. life. I've hired people in, in this marketing company that I have, but I don't even check if they're a marketing graduate. <laughs> I want to see saying. the results. What they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. What's your work? Yeah. Show me your work, right? Show me your work, not yeah. what you can do. Yeah. Show me what you can do. It's it's more than saying what you say you you can do, right? Yes. I mean, is that how you hire as well? I'm saying. I think <laughs> for me, what am I gonna do with this piece of paper? Right. Really, what am I gonna do? Like, you're not gonna sit here and teach me how to do marketing. That, as far as I'm concerned, I'm an advocate for education, but. Right. It has to be the right education because, mm. unfortunately, I, I have a really strong opinions in how the education system works here mm -hmm. because most of the curriculum are back in the dinosaur's age. It's irrelevant nowadays. Right. You're still teaching marketing as if, you know, we're at 1992. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm all for the education. Yeah, But I think that um, people shouldn't restrict themselves of, like, getting the education in a formal school system mm. if they could actually excel more by learning on their own pace and, and, and checking out, you know, what's, what's relevant nowadays and learning from that. How is it being a mom? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I'll see your stories and your, and your photos on Instagram yeah. with your... Yeah. How old is he? Uh, he turned three uh, last week. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... it's the thing is, because I grew up with without the, I, I never knew what a parental love is. And I've all my life, I've always been craving and searching for it. The thing is, what, you're, what you think you're needing and what you're searching for will control you. Mm -hmm. It has power over you regardless how emotionally intelligent you are. Mm -hmm. And for me, I felt like being a mom, I, I, I practiced that my whole life. Like I, I, like I thought about how can I be the best version of myself so I can become an amazing mom. Right. Because you you can't you can't really separate yourself from being a Hershey Hilado that is a mm -hmm. businesswoman to mm -hmm. being a mom. Like there's no such thing. Right. I think that one thing that uh, business allows people like me is that we constantly get pushed to a lot of adversity, to a lot of problems that 
we solve like a thousand problems in a week more than one person would solve in in their lifetime right. you know so for me it was like i felt like I, I i prepared to become a mom ever since i could remember and now if people ask me how does it feel to be a mom like i'm just proud as fuck <laughs> Like really, like it's it's the most beautiful thing. It's it, it's it, it's to un, to understand that depth of love and to feel and receive it at the right. same time, different level. You know, last time we we met here in the in the studio, yeah. um, that was what. A f- no, it was the first time we met. I was pregnant, and you right. didn't even realize I was pregnant. Right, I didn't know. Yeah. Right, that, that was in my other uh, office. warehouse office, yeah. right in Makati. Yeah. No, no, but here the last time we met, yeah. it's a single, right? Yeah. And now you're engaged, right? No, I'm not engaged. Not engaged? <laughs> no. You're not engaged? No, no, no. Okay, I thought you were engaged. No. <laughs> people, but are people you in a relationship like, now? I am in a relationship. Okay. After right. nine years. I've been single for right. ages, he, man. Like, you said. Okay. Now, you have an MMK episode. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, Maalala Mo Kaya, one of the longest running um, is that a drama series. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. right? Yeah. On, on TV. And you have an episode there. Tell me more about that one. I haven't watched it. Yeah. Uh, Who portrayed you? Ria Ataide. Okay. Yeah. So that one is actually, um, it's crazy how the, I'm not sure if you believe in the law of attraction, but growing up in the Philippines, MMK is one of those shows that I would watch every Saturday. I would too. Because it's the same age as me, like literally. And then I, I used to imagine, like, I always say to myself, like, my life, my life story is like MMK stuff, you know? <laughs> and then it is. Af- right after the um, 30 Under 30 list that was published with Influencer.com, right. it's a magazine in the US, uh, one of their editor read about that list mm-hmm. and she found out that I was, that I'm Filipina. So they reached out to me. I was in Australia at that time. I didn't saw the message. Mm-hmm. I came to the Philippines and they reached out again. It was like the first day that I landed here. And okay. then I thought it was like, uh, you guys, I, I thought it was, you know, someone trying to scare me and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm from ABS, CBN, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it basically started. And said, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm open to that. What's the process for that? They ask you questions, you tell your story, and then they, they write about it, and yeah. then you have to approve about it? Yes. Is it? Okay. Everything went through me. Because most people would write mm-hmm. to, to be an MMK, whereas I didn't. What happened was they interview everyone that's involved in the story and then confirm facts versus, you know, chismes or whatever. And then uh, that's how it... I was, I was there the whole time they were shooting and stuff. Your story is MMA... MMA um, I'm sorry. MMA? M- <laughs> not MMA. M- MK stuff. But you talked about rising over pain. Yeah. Tell me more about that in that episode. For me, that's my... I mean, that's my main core message. I think that one of the things that is more important in life, more than IQ, Mm -hmm. more than the bachelor's degree or your academic academics is emotional intelligence. Correct. I always live by this this belief that our chains of habits are so light that not until that we have to break it, that's when you (laughs) realize like, shit, like I wasn't living intentionally. Most of the things, the way we move, the, ma- the way we talk, the way we act on a daily basis, it's just a chain of habits. Mm-hmm. And what I came to understand as, I, as I'm, I'm learning more about myself is that emotions drives behaviors. And when you understand emotions, you can change your life. Like if you can take control of your pain and your trauma, and then, because most people, when they go through stuff like what I went through, it paralyzes them. Right. It's like, why, li- you know, what am I fighting for? What do I have, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing out there for me. Like, they, they give up in life. Mm-hmm. But once you understand that your pain is prerequisite to becoming this person that you actually need, life becomes not easy, but life becomes more interesting. Talk about rising about pain. What would you advise that 18-year-old self, that 18-year-old Hershey? Wow, okay. As an 18-year-old, I think that my number one advice for myself would be that life doesn't happen to you. Life happened for you. Right. Like, just that different story in your head. Like, it happened for me for a reason, you know? It didn't happen to me. Like, I can't control other people and how they act. I can't control my mom, you know? But it happened for me because I was meant to learn something. And um, I was meant to change to change this whole family thing about 
abuse and, and, and all of these stuff, yeah? That train stopped with me. Right. For you, the importance of emotional intelligence guides you into all the decisions that you make, right? And yeah. the thing is, people who are not able to control their emotions are just led towards whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're able to control your emotions, it's the best way for you to be guided on how you decide things. Yeah. Like every day, like as a mom, as a business person, yeah. as a friend, yeah. as a partner, yeah. right? If you're able to control your emotions, yeah. you're the most dangerous person in the room. Most people are operating from a place of they're just reacting to what they're feeling instead of responding to it. Like, like whatever happens with life throws at you. Yeah, it's so like, you, you made me angry. Right. I'm going to come and bite you, you know? Right. <laughs> like, that's the way most people would right. respond. But You hit me, I hit back. I think that's um, back in the day, you know? But nowadays, I think that living like that would, you know, for an eye for an eye will only make the whole world mm-hmm. blind. It just makes matters worse. Yeah. And I think that once you also understand, have a depth of understanding of emotions, your, of your own emotions, you become more empathetic. And that people are not giving you a hard time. They're having a hard time. People are dealing with their own shit. <laughs> and if they know, if they know the answers to that, then they wouldn't act or behave in a certain way that would hurt people around them. Right. The thing is, most people do not even understand themselves. Mm-hmm. So they are simply operating from a place of like <laughs> they're just walking blind and right now as you age you what almost 30 i think i'm um, 30 30 okay yeah. At your age do you feel like you're still learning a lot I'm, of things well, hell yeah i'm yeah. forever like I, I look at myself as a student of life i right. think that once you once you say to yourself, I'm, I'm an expert, I don't need to learn anything anymore, then you're dead. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, there, the world is changing. Mm-hmm. People are changing. You're changing. And so you need to keep growing and keep learning. And this is where the importance of self-education comes in. Yeah. <laughs> like after you finish school, wherever you are, doesn't finish there. I always thought that after I finished college, like, whoo, I'm done reading books. Yeah. And no. it turns out I've been reading more books now than ever. I've never yeah. actually finished a book in school. Yeah, I'm saying. Grade school, high school, I, as far as I can remember. Yeah. I only finished what was required to me in school. But yeah. now I've been reading books every day for the longest time. And I think reading from there and then applying it and then sharing it goes a long way. Would yeah. you agree in self-education? Uh, totally. I think that uh, knowledge is knowing something, but wisdom is about applying what you've learned. Right. And that comes with after school because in school like you know okay this is the it's not it real life is not about memorizing some line in the book and then providing the answer a b c d and and that's it mm-hmm. you know real life after school have a lot of consequences you don't just get us you know a, a minus a or whatever right. it's it's the real thing is like there's consequences how do you relate self-education now for your business because you, you've, yeah. you've learned all these things from mentors from other people in the business mm-hmm. and from self-education as well how do you apply that to your business it comes so natural for me people's demands is what really drive innovation because there's this demand yeah. so you constantly need to learn right. something a solution so, yeah and i have this competitiveness in me that i need to be the one to provide that solution so for me to do that, I need to learn something new. I need to provide the, you know, this service to, to this brand and nobody has ever done in the Philippines. Right. So I have that because I love that um, I'm always competing with myself. The way you said that, it just means that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, like success mm-hmm. for you is not having all those wealth and riches. It's being able to do something unique that no one else can do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. I mean, well, I was younger, yeah. You know, it's it's right. uh, the money, it's important and everything. But then once you understand more of what drives you and what not drives you and what's worth doing and would provide more impact to other people, you operate differently. It's uh, Success is having the ability to be happy from seeing other people happy mm-hmm. because of you existed because of what you've done. Like a, a great example for me was I have this, um, she's uh, one of my longest staff. She worked for me for six years. Mm-hmm. And I basically sent her daughter to college. Okay, it's awesome. 
So when I look at my business, every time I hire people, I always made sure that they understand why they're there. You're not just here to do admin stuff. Right. You're not just here to reconcile my books. You're here because you're needed so then the people in the production area could function so then Ate Heidi can send her daughter mm. to school. I need you to understand that we're all a, a, a domino here. Mm -hmm. You don't perform, it affects the livelihood of someone else. Right. So for me, it, it's... It, it, I think that operating with purpose and understanding and that, you know, there's there's a bigger meaning on just beyond your job description right. is that's what makes me hire people, not right. the degree. Tell me about the huge adversity that came to you in your life, not just in business, that you had to overcome. It would be when when my mom sold me for okay. for money, you know? Yeah. It's like now that I'm a mom, I'm a parent, like I could never ever in your head. Do that. Right. How? But that also taught me so much about unconditional love. It's accepting the fact that there's nothing that I can do to change how my mom saw the world. It must have been really hard for her. How's your relationship with your mom? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, non-existent. Okay. No, I mean that in a good way because for me, it's like how I never felt the... For her, like she's, she still exists now and she right. still lives in the province. The way I see it, how can I lose something that I never had? Even if she's there and she's not there, it doesn't really affect me. Okay. I mean, it sounds cold, but that's just the reality of life. It is. Will you find it in your heart to forgive her? I forgave her. Okay. Like truly. If I see her, like one time she came to Manila to mm -hmm. visit uh, one of my siblings. We went out to revel and we had fun. <laughs> How's your relationship with your siblings? I'm always the head of family. So I'm like, I'm like the mom and dad. Even if you're not the eldest. Yes. <laughs> I've always been the person, you know, most people would see as bossy, but the thing is, I trust my judgment mm -hmm. and that everything that I ask them to do and not to do is for their own good. Okay. And with, with MMK, did it have anything to do with your business? Did it have some aspects of your business being shared in that episode? Yeah. Okay. The story basically ended close on that story of you know me being a, a businesswoman and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Because right. I think that's important to tell. Um, I think the, it resonated with a lot of Filipinos because here, unfortunately, when you don't finish school, let alone like second year high school lang, um, mm -hmm. people kind of predetermine that you know sh you're never going to be successful. Right. And then I broke all of that limitations for a lot of people because they put a lot of weight in attaining a bachelor's degree, which again, like it's good to have that, but not everyone is privileged enough to have parents that could send right. them to school. And you know, there's millions of people that aren't able to do that. And I think that was the main reason why it resonated with a lot of young people. So tell me about resources. Talk about self-education. Of course, mm -hmm. you're not going to get that from, from school. Information is free now. Yeah. There's YouTube. You could download ebooks if you can't afford the books. What else for you would, would be a good source for self education? For me, I think if you are freshly graduated and you're working for someone yeah. and you think like you need that to pay the bills and stuff, right? Yeah. I think while you're doing so, I always advise uh, younger people to 20, 20 to 25 percent of what they earn, they have to invest that in themselves. And that's saying in, you know, buying courses and skills that they right. need to acquire in order to not just elevate their skill set, but to elevate their income. Because hmm. your income is highly dependent also on the skills, right? right? So I would always advise them to, you know, self-educate through websites like uh, Udemy. Udemy, Udemy, or Udemy, yeah. yeah. Udemy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on that. Like, right. even up to this day, that's how I basically educated myself when I was... 19, even now, G I still... Give a couple of courses from Udemy that you like the most. I'm really into about uh, inf IT, information technology, okay. computer, anything to do with computer, marketing, social media marketing, because, I mean, that's needed for my business. Mm -hmm. I also learn a lot there in terms of the fashion and in the right. technicalities because I didn't have that education. So I think... While you're working for someone, let's say you, you, you work in, in, in a call center or something, most people in this day yeah. and age would work, be working there. Uh, you know, learn some, some computer technology and some web developing or um, marketing side of, you know, because yeah. at least when, once you're done and once you're sick of working for this person, you can try and find other opportunities or you can even start your 
own little, you know, uh, freelance uh, job right. on the side or build your own business on the side. I think that's the best way of self-education nowadays. Yeah, and, and that's a good way to have better value yeah. that you can offer for yourself. A lot of people ask as a, as a coach, like, how can I be, you know, of use to other people? And he said, be valuable. The mm -hmm. way you become valuable is focus on one thing and be good at it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how you, you do it. You educate yourself, you know, learn something new, a skill. I mean, if you Google top skills in 2022, there'll be a lot, right? Yeah. Like copywriting or web development, there SEO, yeah. stuff like those, or, you know, social media management. There's a lot that actually pay would help pay the bills. Literally one project of like web development is like three months worth of your salary. Right. So the best way for me like I'm gonna use myself as an example here. So when I was um, 21, I built my first e-commerce business that became uh, part of the 30 list of most innovative e-commerce store in Australia. Dope. That was back in 2016, I think. Dope. I built that website myself See. by buying what a did $50. You use? Uh, well, Wix. No, Shopify. <laughs> Shopify. Okay. Um, so obviously, there's coding involved, HTML mm -hmm. coding. And at that time, I didn't have the money to pay for a web developer, mm -hmm. but I know I had $50. So I bought a web development course um, in Udemy.com and then I basically built my own website. Wow. If there's a will, there's a way. There is. <laughs> and, you know, and, and from, that, from that, I got involved in a creative um, agency where we build websites with, you mm -hmm. know, for e-commerce. And right. I made, you know, a lot of money from that. And that's, that's coming from a $50 investment. Yeah. And you're able. I uh, was able to grow that and expand that into six, eight figures income. Right. So that's the best way for me to. <laughs> that's what I've been highlighting all the time. You know, when I'm working with my with my students in my coaching business, that you know, learn a skill. If it's uncomfortable for you, that's great. Because if you're not used to doing something, it means that you're learning from it. Yeah. Right. And and use that and keep going at it until it becomes muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Like the, the best basketball players are not the best basketball players, you know, overnight. Yeah. It's the work that you, that you don't see in front of people, yeah. right? People only see the results, but they don't see how many glasses you, you've broken, yeah. you know, it's, failures. It's a consistency, right? you know? You keep doing this. Like, the best way for me to say it is everyone wants to have an amazing body. Everyone wants to have that muscle, right. but nobody wants to lift the weight. Right. I always say that. Like, you guys want to earn this. You want to do this, but then... How come you're just sitting there and watching Netflix all day? Right. Everyone wants to go to letter Z yeah. from point A, but they don't like going to B to Y. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Everyone, yeah. How can I jump from A to There's Z? No such thing. And that's where people get scammed with yeah. these, you know, get rich, uh, get, uh, get quick rich, scheme. quick schemes yeah. from from people where you have to pay stuff. Mm. expensive high ticket stuff to do that i mean you buy a course yeah sure it's an investment mm. but some people would that's where the shenanigans come in from mm -hmm. you know these these people that sell you a dream a pipeline dream and yes. stuff so make sure you avoid those stuff guys yeah no that's <laughs> I, I never believe in an overnight success like even the guy i'm not sure if you know the story but you know the guy that developed uh, pokemon yeah that pokemon okay. go you know it went viral like almost overnight right but then that guy actually built Pokemon Go 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was like, when he started, he was still developing that. And then not until 20 years later that that app became a huge success. Crazy. So imagine the amount of patience and belief in what he's doing. Right. Like if that person has that, like I think that what makes a successful entrepreneur or any person in that regard is having to believe in something that is not happening yet, but yeah. you know in your heart that you Absolutely. will make it. So Absolutely. I always use that. It's like 20 years, like crazy, you know? You know, I've always seen you as a very, very strong, independent woman. And, <laughs> you know, you're headstrong. Yeah. That's what I see with, with this lady right here. She's very headstrong. That's what I can see. Like, you know, she's gung-ho. She knows what she wants. <laughs> and she'll go for at it. She'll go at it. Relentless. Like, yeah. like a beast. This person is... You know, um, it's uh, you have that trait in you. I think that's that's the fight in you. I think it's the grit, right? Because it's not everyone can uh, have something, but I think that what's very rare for people that admirable. came from yeah, from people that came from nothing is that grit. Like I don't give a shit what you think. I'm still gonna do it anyway. You know, because yeah. yeah. most of the time, man, like ninety eight percent of the time, I'm scared of what I'm doing. Right. But I'm doing it scared because right. I know that 
that's the only way for me to learn. Yeah. Because I cannot live in fear. I stopped living in fear because I knew that it was always been me versus me. Right. And I was my bottleneck. Right. And you've the whole conversation. You've never compared yourself to anyone but nobody. yourself, right? Yeah. Like no. you're 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 talking as if you're talking to your 15 year old self. Yes. Right? Yeah. I think that's why <laughs> That's I, what I've I, been seeing at you. When when people talk about me, people that knows me <laughs> for years, they know I I'm not going to say I have zero insecurity, mm -hmm. but I was never a person to compare my success, my failures and myself to anyone, to anyone else. Because my experiences, their experiences are completely different. Right. And it was always been like when when people ask me, so who's your main competitor? <laughs> I don't really think about it yeah. because when I create products, it was from here. Yeah. It wasn't from their head. It was right. from my head. Yeah. So it was always me outdoing and outworking what that thing I created yesterday. So it was yeah, it was never really about that having that jealousy or or that comparison with someone. I was never really that person. I, like. I don't really give a shit. You definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> what are your three wishes? Three wishes for my life or? Everything. Um, I mean, we all wear different hats, but yeah. you, you wear one hat for, for all. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 um, like what you, what you see, what you hear and what like. It's crazy because when people look at you in social media, they have this mm. picture. Oh, my God. Like she's feminine and that yeah, but then when yeah, you meet yeah. me in person i'm far from feminine yeah like, i may look like it but it's not so for me my wish is that i stay forever intentional with how i live i had this conversation with my partner intentional living. um two weeks ago have, mm -hmm. um, have you heard about uh, memento mori yeah memento mori yeah memento yeah. mori yeah. yeah you're gonna die and he yeah and he had that weekly calendar yeah Right. Of how many days left? Weeks, weeks I think. Weeks. Yeah, weeks. And then if you really do that with your own life, it's crazy because I love living. And if you think about, let's say, your life expectancy is 83. Like, I'm 30 now. I've got, like, what, right. 50 years to live. What can I do to be of use, to be of service? What can I do to right. help another human being that, you know, to leave a legacy that could outlive me? Mm -hmm. Like, my son would be proud. Like, she was my mom, you know? Yep. And my grandchildren, nah, I'm the grand, you know, granddaughter, grandson yep. of Hershey uh, Hilado. Yeah. I, I never took pride with where I came from, my right. parents and my, my... It's not your fault. Exactly. It's not your fault. But I wanted to change that. It's not because of the ego or the pride, but I think that every human being in this planet has a purpose. Out of the 20 million sperm, <laughs> you happened. Right. You're here. That's and when people give special. up when they go through adversity and they feel like, I can't do this anymore, they take their own life. Like, think of that. Out of the 20 million sperms, yeah. you're here. Yeah. I mean, it sounds crazy when you think about that, but if you can't find purpose with anything that's going on around you mm -hmm. or with everyone around you, find it somewhere else. Yeah. You can't find what you're looking for from the same place that you lost it. And that's why I'm always very, like, you'll never see me partying or hanging out with different people. Mm -hmm. I'm never that. Because I'm very strict with saying no. Because for me, saying no is keeping yourself accountable on the person that you want to become. Correct. And if you're a yes person and you just want to please everyone and be the, you know, that, that you want to be seen, if mm -hmm. you have the need to be seen, then you will always act that way. Okay. You're operating from a place of, you know, I want to be this person. Like, look at me. Look at me. Like, I never operated that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Ambilis>. Yeah. <laughs>